Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. More school closures to tell you about due to the increase of COVID cases in the KSAP viewing area. We've added several schools since the early newscast. Find out if your child's district is on the list. Plus a bizarre moment in Canada. A woman standing on top of her sinking car while taking a selfie. David Sears is going to explain this one coming up in your morning headlines. We are talking about robots, 3D printed earrings, and Dream Week. Good morning, I'm Max Mass. We are here at Port San Antonio. We're going to explain what the port means to Dream Week and the initiative. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 18th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. And we have another day to enjoy the beautiful weather before things get very cold. Uh, I stepped outside earlier. We had a beautiful sunrise, and then a couple of other things were happening earlier as well. Yeah, I'm a little confused. Uh, well, <laughs> it, it was a beautiful sunrise, so we'll start with that. You're right. Okay. Uh, and then we had uh, a little bit of cloud cover come in and what looked like some rain on the radar. It wasn't reaching the ground. It was just evaporating before it reached the ground, but you could actually see it in the clouds. That has moved away too. maybe a couple drops. A few people reported a few sprinkles. That was it. Otherwise, it's going to be a beautiful day. 53 degrees right now, 47 in New Valley, 45 Carissa Springs, 51 in Kerrville. And here's the next three days. And Steph alluded to this. It is going to be warm today and tomorrow. But look at that number on Thursday, 35. We got a good cold front through here. And yes, there could be a little bit of precipitation with it. We're not too worried about major impacts around here. But we'll talk more about that coming up in a bit. There could be some light precip even here in San Antonio, some light wintry precip. There's a look at the radar, and uh, we do have some, again, light returns trying to come through here, but they're moving east fairly quickly, and we don't expect uh, really much from that. Mountains here jump back into the high categories at 910. Molds are low at 230. And looking at the forecast for today, we're going to be close to 73 this afternoon. We'll call it mostly sunny. Southerly winds pick up 10 to 15 miles per hour, and there could be some fog. By tomorrow morning too. We're going to break down this entire forecast. Talk about that cold air coming in. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Look forward to it. Thank you, Justin. A look out with Transky. There's I-35 at Splashtown. The camera over there. Things are moving, and I-10 at Frio. Things are moving there as well. More normal traffic today. This day after MLK Day. Let's take a look at today's nine at nine. Thick ash and smoke delaying aid deliveries to the remote island of Tonga this morning. New Zealand's military is trying to send water and other supplies, but ash is on the airport's runway, preventing planes from landing. The internet connection has also been cut to the island, making it difficult to gauge what supplies are needed. The Senate will take up the long-debated voting rights bill already passed by the House. The initial deadline was yesterday, but Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer blames winter weather and COVID cases within the Senate for not taking up the legislation sooner. The Supreme Court will hear arguments in a dispute centered around a group applying to hoist a Christian flag on a pole outside of Boston's City Hall. The case goes back to 2017 when a group tried to fly their flag on the same pole that hoists flags for paramedics, sports teams, and LGBTQ groups. Boston officials say it violates the separation of church and state. Authorities in Florida are investigating the death of a prominent LGBTQ activist. The body of Jorge Diaz Johnston was found dumped in a landfill after he vanished earlier this month. Diaz Johnston successfully challenged Florida's ban on same-sex marriage and is the brother of former Miami mayor. Authorities have not released a cause of death. It is, however, being investigated as a homicide. Moderna is working on a single shot that covers both flu and COVID, but it's quite some time away. Moderna isn't planning to have the vaccine ready until the fall of 2023, and even then it will only be available in some countries. Apple is now requiring that its employees show proof of a COVID-19 booster shot. If an employee doesn't get the shot, they have to submit to frequent testing. The mandate applies to store and corporate employees. North Korea has launched a fourth missile test, and we are only three weeks into 2022. Korean officials claim they were tactical guided missiles that hit their precise targets. In response, the U.S. announced more sanctions on North Korea. Prices for orange juice could be on the rise. Government forecasters now say Florida's orange crop will likely be the smallest since World War II. A disease affecting trees and development in the Sunshine State have combined to cut Florida's citrus growing acreage in half since 2001. 
The nation is celebrating a silly old bear today is National Winnie the Pooh Day. The celebration coincides with the creator's birthday, and that's today's 9 at 9. A number of various school districts are being affected by the spike in COVID numbers. Take a look at your screen. We have an updated list here. Uvalde CISD will temporarily cancel classes and all school programs beginning today. They will return on Monday, January 24th. Ingram ISD, Rungi ISD, Medina ISD, and Savinal ISD are also out for similar reasons. Rungi and Medina ISD will return on Monday. Ingram and Savinal will return on Thursday of this week. We'll continue to follow this and bring you updates on KSAT.com and, of course, on the news at noon. Well, speaking of the rise in COVID cases, Metro Health says on average we're seeing about 5,000 new cases a day. There are also 1,129 patients in local hospitals with COVID. In the next hour, a new federal drive through testing site will be open, and Sarah Costa joins us in the studio to tell us more. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. The testing site is being handled by Metro Health with support from the Texas Division of Emergency Management. It's happening at the Alamo Dome and will be open today from 10 in the morning to 5 p.m. After that, the hours will be seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. PCR tests will be given out and the site will be able to process up to 1,200 tests daily. Now, keep in mind, appointments are required. Now, we have that information on how you can register on KSAT.com. You can also call that number on your screen right now 800-635-8611 also with at home testing kits in short supply the government is stepping in to offer up to four tests per household starting tomorrow you can order those four tests through covidtest.gov there will also not be any shipping costs related to the test and they are expected to ship within seven to 12 days once you order them it is recommended that anyone who is experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 to only use an at-home test at least five days after coming in close contact with someone who has tested positive. And don't forget about your mask. Experts say the N95 or KN95 masks are the most effective, but they're pretty hard to find. So if you're trying to extend the life of your mask, Metro Health says to use a rotation system. This means you can use a different one every day for five days that allows you to use an N95 or KN95 mask five times instead of just once. But don't stretch beyond that, Metro Health says. So if you're also wearing a cloth mask, make sure to wash them every time you wear them. And disposable masks should only be worn once. Mark and Stephanie. In your morning headlines, Department of Homeland Security and the FBI have a warning for faith-based communities. And a woman decides to drive on a frozen river. Plus, a lesson for all dogs. David Sears joins us now live in the studio. Good morning, David. Now we know folks are sitting at home watching and they got their dogs sitting there, so make sure your dog's paying attention to this story. Okay. okay. Coming right. up sure. in just a second. What we witnessed over the weekend in Colleyville when an armed man took hostages at a synagogue has the FBI worried that this kind of terrorism could happen again. The Anti Defamation League says attacks on Jewish people are increasing. They point out that most of the anti Semitic attacks are harassment and vandalism. However, there has been at least six deadly assaults since 2016. In the Texas case, the hostages were able to escape and the gunman was killed at a sign of the times. Members of the synagogue in Colleyville took active shooter training. One of the hostages now speaking out says that training saved all four lives. It absolutely saved our lives. We escaped and we escaped because we kept presence of mind, because we made plans, because we strategically moved people. The Department of Homeland Security is advising faith based communities to really take a closer look at their security. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is trying to get more funding from Congress so those communities can upgrade their security if needed. And security camera footage kids on ice right there skating and look at that car just zipping by that car was on the river. It was frozen. This is happening in Ontario, Canada. The woman's car came to a frozen stop. The ice got thin. The car broke through and there she was shredded in the middle of the river. She was at least able to get out and get on top. Zachary King and a friend got a rope in his friend's kayak and were able to save the woman. Now, the most peculiar part, if you take a closer look at the car and the woman, she's taking a selfie while she's standing on it and the car's sinking. It's like everything worked out perfectly. Like it got her on the kayak. 
uh, pulled her in. And as soon as we pulled her in, the car went under fully. Then we pull her out and we're like, what the hell are you doing? And, uh, and she was like, oh, just having fun. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, I'd totally do that again. Like word for word, that's what she said. Okay, how much fun is it going to be to get that car off the bottom of the river one day? Just after they got to her the, in the kayak, the car sank. Guess she's at least got proof of the car sinking and her driving down the river. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. I was going to say, let's see if her insurance policy is intact yeah. after oh. yesterday. She better have yes. some good insurance. Mm -hmm. All right, finally this morning, meet Buddy, a pit bull terrier mix from Phoenix. He's a happy dog today, but a few days ago, not so much. This is the predicament Buddy found himself in. Yep, got his head stuck in a cinder block. Aww. A good Samaritan dog lover called the Humane Society. They came with some tools to free Buddy. Apparently, he got away from his owner, went on a little trip, came across another dog, and then somehow ended up stuck. The other dog, not so friendly. The other dog was not very appreciative of him being there and then uh, proceeded to bite him multiple times on the head. <laughs> Might have had something to do with getting stuck. Hmm, I don't know. All you need is a chisel and a hammer, though. Buddy finally got free. The Humane Society able to track the owner, and they were reunited. Oh, buddy, Aww. all better now. There's, there's a lesson for all you dogs that are watching this morning. I leave our newscast on for Truman at home, David. So, uh -huh. Truman, no. There you go. <laughs> no. No, do not get in that cinder block. He's just looking at TV go. I know. He's probably like, <laughs> you interrupted my nap for what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. See you in a bit. Right now, it's 909, about 53 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Six new laws go into effect in Texas today. RJ Marcus takes a look coming up. A local nonprofit is gearing up for its annual drive that will help provide deployed service members and veterans with one of their most requested items. Coming up, details on how you can get involved. The nonprofit Soldiers Angels says one of the most requested items from deployed service members and veterans in VA hospitals is new socks. So the organization needs your help as they launch their sixth annual Warm Feet for Warriors Sock Drive. And since the program began in 2017, over 177,000 pairs of socks have been collected and distributed to deploy troops and veterans. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Soldiers Angels headquarters with more on the sock drive and the impact it's having. Good morning, Tiffany. Hi, good morning. Last year, their goal was 10,000 pairs of socks, but they exceeded the expectation, of course, more than 60,000 pairs of socks. And take a look, they're gearing up for this year. They're hoping to exceed those numbers. And we're joined right now with Amy Palmer, President and CEO of Soldiers Angels and Army veteran Chris Chan. Good morning, both of you. Chris, we'll start with you. You mentioned you were overseas when you received socks. What did that mean for you? You know, it actually meant a lot. It, it may seem a little silly, but getting socks uh, means a lot, especially if they're not just your standard green or black socks that you wear with uniform. Um, and you were able to build that connection with whoever sent those socks to you because you feel like you're at home. And if you're off duty or, you know, like you're me and because you're wearing boots and you just sneak them on anyways, it's, it just makes you feel more like you're at home and makes you feel a little bit more relaxed and comfortable. And one time you even received funny socks, right? No, I've received <laughs> funny socks over the years. Um, you know, I was having a conversation with my pen pals and we were just talking about my brother and how he loves the Cookie Monster. So I got Cookie Monster socks and I'm from Chicago and a huge Bulls fan. And so I got Bulls socks. And so it's just, it, it's an amazing feeling to know that there are people out there that care enough and socks are always something that you need. That's amazing. And Amy, where are these socks going to be delivered to? Soldiers Angels will be delivering socks to our deployed service members in Iraq, Kuwait, Africa, Qatar, all sorts of locations, but also veterans in VA hospitals and Garden Reservists that are deployed stateside. And what is the reaction from, from people that are getting these socks? Oh, they love the socks. I mean, especially deployed service members that have been deployed a while, been wearing the same socks over and over and, and washing those same socks to get a new fresh pair right out of the bag is really a great relief. And San Antonio has always been their giving back. What does it mean now for them to come and do the same? Absolutely. You know, San Antonio always comes through for us, whether it's volunteering or collecting items. So we're really excited. And, you know, it's a big increase in the goal from 10,000 last year to 50,000. But we're confident San Antonio is going to come through for us this year. Where can people donate these socks? 
Um, they can find information on our website at soldiersangels.org, so information about the program and where to donate. But they can also do Amazon wish lists that come directly to us. So they're welcome to mail them or drop them off at our office right here in San Antonio. And for people that don't understand, these socks are so meaningful, especially when um, they're out there, there's rain, there's all types of conditions out there. Can you explain to us that? Yeah, so it's not only about getting a package, which they love, even if it's just a letter and a pair of socks, they love that. And you know, that's easy for us to do. But also because they are in, in all kinds of conditions and sand and the socks, although they can wash them, they never get clean again. And so to get fresh socks like these right out of the bag is just huge for them. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for your time this morning, and thank you for your service. Of course, you can find more information on this on ksat.com. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank T you, Tiffany. Tiffany Live over at Soldiers Angels headquarters here in San Antonio. Well, we spent a good part of the morning chanting with Mike Osterhage about I what's going to be a shocking know. weather change as we go into Thursday. Thursday. So mm -hmm. he said he'll know more tomorrow, mm -hmm. exactly like when everything will come, including some uh, precipitation, not participation. Right. <laughs> we'll so, all be participating. Well, so we know, so yeah. we know Mike will know more tomorrow, but we're going to yeah. hit you right now, Justin. Yeah. What do you know? Well, let me put your minds at ease. I've okay. got a lot of questions, uh, a lot of uh, people asking, hey, is this going to be like last year? No. No. Uh, we do think we'll get a little bit of wintry weather, but this is a one day event. We don't think we'll have huge impacts. It will get a little bit chilly, but we're not talking about the numbers that we dealt with back in February. So. There's really no comparison, is there? There is no comparison. Okay. So we want to put pe people's mind at ease in that sense. Okay. Let's look at the radar first. So let's start with what's going on right now. And we do have a few very light returns on the radar. These are moving west to east. A little bit of a disturbance in the upper part of the atmosphere, and a lot of this didn't reach the ground. Although, on social media, a couple of people did tell me they had a few sprinkles this morning. As this moves through, it's going to move east of us. We're going to get a lot of sun today, and it'll turn out to be another gorgeous day. Take a look at this time lapse, and you can actually see some of that. Well, I don't want to call it rain. A few of those sprinkles coming through. You can see it actually evaporating before reaching the ground there on the time lapse. 53 degrees. Dew point is at 46. That number has been on the rise with southerly winds now. Yesterday, you remember those dew points were in the teens. So this is actually a pretty big rise. And by tomorrow morning. We'll start to see dew points even a little bit higher, and I think that's going to allow for some fog to develop. So uh, tomorrow morning, the commute could uh, could have some fog for a time. I don't think it'll last all that long. And uh, the f dew point forecast shows that we'll jump into the 50s when it comes to dew points by tomorrow morning. And that's why I think maybe a little cloud cover and some fog to start, but then sun by the afternoon. And uh, tomorrow, by the way, will be our last warm day. Satellite picture shows some of those clouds that have been tracking through this morning. Uh, it'll be a mostly sunny afternoon. 53 Kerrville, 53 San Antonio, 49 right now in Uvalde, 48 Criso Springs is still holding on to 48 there in Gonzales. Forecast for the rest of today, 65 noontime, 70 by 2 o'clock. We're up around 73 for your high temperature. Uh, looking at the forecast down the line, and this is the... Uh, sort of where things uh, get a little hairy, right? Because we have this cold front coming in. And by 5 p.m., cold front's on our doorstep. 5 p.m. Wednesday, uh, tomorrow. It should be through San Antonio by the evening hours. By midnight, it will have pushed through the entire area. I don't really anticipate any rain with the front itself. Uh, maybe a few showers along the coast. But it's behind it where we get a little energy coming in. Temperatures will be cold enough in the hill country I think to get some wintry precip Thursday morning. And this model shows that probably in the form of some sleet and freezing rain. As long as we don't see a huge accumulation, and I don't think we're going to see big accumulations. This is all going to be really light. We shouldn't have a lot of issues on the roadways, but we will need to watch the bridges and overpasses as we normally do in these kind of situations. As we fast forward to midday, some of this activity tries to shift south. Temperatures in San Antonio will be marginal, but we could see a little bit of a wintry mix here. Maybe some sleet, maybe a little bit of freezing rain. And then by the evening hours, this is shifting south and out of our area and we're just left with a little bit of cloud cover. The wind chill may be one of the, the biggest issues we deal with and uh, the charts kind of well kind of wonky here but uh, we'll see wind chills in the mid 20s I think Thursday with gusts 30 to 35 miles per hour so when you wake up go to school on Thursday I know we're talking about the the wintry weather but keep in mind wind chills are going to be uh, pretty brutal Thursday morning. 
Now also, we have that uh, chance for precip. We mentioned that about a 40% chance. Good news is we have some more chances down the line, too. We really do need some rain Sunday and Monday. Some more chances in the forecast. So here's how it looks in the seven day 77 tomorrow, 40% chance of a wintry mix on Thursday. Windy. Highs only in the mid 30s likely we will get a freeze Friday morning and probably Saturday morning too. temperatures moderate into the 50s and then Sunday and Monday. I think we'll have some chances for rain there in the form of rain with temperatures back in the mid 50s, even close to 60 by Monday guys. But just make sure you have that uh, case that weather app. We'll keep you updated on uh, how things play out. Thursday. Right, Justin, thank you. We've got a late addition to our school closure list. Gonzalez ISD apparently is out today, but they'll be back tomorrow. They also say they're going to hold athletic events as scheduled unless you are otherwise notified. All right, in time now, 921 and 53 degrees out there for now. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, Max Nassi has a look at some of the Dream Week events happening right now. And welcome back. It's about 925. Dream Week is happening right now in San Antonio until January 30th. And the purpose of the events and all the speakers are to exchange ideas, inspire discussion, and ignite change. Dream Week's mission is to celebrate our humanity by creating environments for civil and civic engagement to embrace ideas and dreams for the common good. Max Massey joins us live from the San Antonio Museum of Art and Technology. And Max, what do they have planned out there? Good morning, guys. There's a lot going on out here, but I want to start here. Look at this. We have a local high school's robotics team, and this is kind of what Dream Week is. It's symbolic of spurring innovation. Look at that. I have no idea how it all works, but it is amazing. The goal is to basically move the balls and the shipment containers, pseudo shipment containers, in an orderly fashion. Look at that. Picked it up, and now it moves it. So there you go. Joined here with Stephanie Garcia of the port. So Stephanie, why is Port San Antonio helping? How is it helping the initiative of Dream Week? Well, Dream Week is all about accomplishing dreams, and it's about inspiring others to accomplish dreams. So that is what we're doing here. We got together with some of our community partners and our local high schools. So over the next two Saturdays, they'll be out here demonstrating their robots, their 3D printing, augmented reality, and I think we're going to also have a laser cutter here as well. So we've got some fun and exciting um, interactive tech activities, and they're from K through gray, so we invite kindergartens all the way to the grandpas and grandpas to come out. Everyone can get inspired. Uh, the admission is free. Uh, parking is free, so the only expectation is just to come out and be ready to get inspired. All right, guys, earlier, I'm going to Pull the curtain back a little bit. Earlier, we were talking to a six-year-old named Sonia who started her own company thanks to 3D printing. I'm going to show off the earrings. These earrings, part of the company. So there you go. So when Stephanie was saying K through gray, that is exactly what she's talking about. But come here, guys. We are far from done. We're joined here with Mark. So, Mark, you were making a big presentation at the end of Dream Week. Tell us about it. Uh, so... Um what I've been doing for the, or what Love Marketing has been doing for the past year is um, developing out a tech that is involving indoor and outdoor augmented reality navigation. And so I have a sample for here on the wall. And this is something I've done for the Japanese Tea Garden. It's an outdoor navigation app that guides you around the Tea Garden. And you see interactivity, you see 3D models. And this is kind of just a sample of what I want to do for SAMSAT. I haven't really built out the app, and I'm going to reveal it on the 29th. What I have done for SAMSAT is uh, create a loose point cloud of all the exhibits of the center, the Tesla coils, and uh, I'm going to stitch these point clouds together in uh, my software and then make the app. And so on the 29th, uh, you'll see a prototype of uh, interacting with 3D objects, being guided indoors through all the exhibits. That is so amazing, Mark. So from your perspective, one of the presenters here, why is Dream Week so important for innovation? Dream Week is important for innovation because it just breeds innovation. You, th you dream of something and then you make it reality, it's much like uh, these apps, this robotics, uh, 3D printing earrings, like it's all crazy. Um, and so th these type of events are just extremely important for San Antonio. All right, Mark, thank you so much. Guys, we are far from done. We're going to have so much more on all of this on Dream Week and Sonia's story coming up in the news at noon. Back to you. Thank you, Max. And time now, 928. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. A laundry list of new laws going into effect in Texas today. R.J. Marquez breaks down some of them coming up in the next half hour. But first, we're running a viewer question through our trust index. Can you get sick from the same COVID variant twice? What doctors say coming up. 
Top stories we're following today. We're waiting to hear more about a deadly crash early this morning on Highway 90. Around 3.30 this morning, police got a call for a pedestrian hit by a vehicle on the eastbound lanes of Highway 90 between Callahan Road and Military. The woman was already dead when officers got there. The driver accused of hitting her did stay at the scene. As soon as we get more information about this incident, we'll make sure we update you on air and online. In San Antonio police say two people were shot late last night near an apartment complex on the city's northeast side. That's right. It happened just before 10 in the 3600 block of Benz Engelman near Seguin Road. SAPD confirming a man and woman were shot and taken to the hospital and are expected to be OK. Police say they are still looking for the shooting suspect this morning. And San Antonio police trying to figure out what led up to a man being shot while on his bike overnight. It happened just before midnight in the 400 block of Hot Wells Boulevard near South New Braunfels on the city's southeast side. Police say the man was on his bike when someone in a vehicle pulled up. Uh, SAPD says words were exchanged, which led the suspect in the car to shoot the man. He was taken to a hospital in stable condition. However, police say he was uncooperative, so police are still looking for suspects. Turning to the coronavirus now, the CDC has issued a warning saying about 60% of N95 or KN95 masks on the market right now are counterfeit. So how can you tell if your mask is real or a counterfeit? It's an incredibly difficult market um, for consumers to, um, to navigate. There are hundreds of millions of these masks on the market in America right now that have no oversight. Um, it's, it's very dangerous. So here's how to spot the spot rather the fake respirator. First, the N95 should have a NIOSH approval label confirming it meets the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health requirements and make sure NIOSH is spelled correctly. The KN95 does not have any of those uh, any of that that kind of label. Two, it should not have any decorative fabric or add-ons and should not make elaborate claims like a magic mask or life-saving mask. And finally, if the fake the face piece of the respirator has ear loops instead of headbands, that's a red flag. You can check the CDC's website for a list of approved and non-approved masks. Well, with COVID variants out there and constant recommendation updates, it can be tough to wade through all the information. So our Trust Index team is doing some fact checking for you. Courtney Friedman looked into a message from a case and viewer who heard you can't get COVID-19 twice from the same variant. So let's run it through the Trust Index. Omicron is the latest variant causing COVID-19, and you've probably heard the most contagious, tearing through populations faster than previous variants. It's not some, some evil virus plotting what, what it's going to do next. It, every time it replicates itself, it makes little mistakes in its genetic code, and at random, some of these mistakes are going to confer these advantageous qualities like being more infectious. Many people have heard that once you get COVID, whether it's the Omicron or one of the less contagious variants, you can't be infected again. So we checked with Dr. Ruth Berggren at UT Health San Antonio, who says, unfortunately, that's false. Yes, you can get variants twice. That has been seen. And again, time will tell with greater detail. Um, whether it was different for Omicron than it was for Delta versus pre previous versions. KSAT's Trust Index team has also been asked if those previous versions, like the Alpha and Beta variants, are still around. The previous variants that are less infectious, they just kind of disappear. Um, could they be lurking somewhere? Probably. Um, is it relevant to us? Not really. She says there's no war between viruses and that the Omicron killed the Delta variant. That's not what happens. It's just that viruses replicate and the ones that are most infectious are going to be the ones that are landing in the nasal passages and the mouths of the next person that's being infected. Dr. Berggren says because there's still not enough research to solidify how long you have immunity if you've had one of these COVID variants, the best thing to do is still get vaccinated. There are a lot of free sites across the city. You can check it out on our website, ksat.com. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we see sun now. We're at 55 degrees and looking forward to a nice day. Yeah, it is going to be beautiful. Uh, some of that cloud cover moving through a little bit earlier, dropped a few sprinkles here around San Antonio. That's moving out. No big deal. Temperatures right now are in the 50s here around uh, town and most areas here across uh, South Texas this morning. Uh, 54 Fredericksburg, 53 in Kerrville, 55 Catula, 50 in Gonzales. So some of that cloud cover moving in your direction. And you can see some of those light returns over there earlier. Basically, it dissipated at this point. As we look out west, 
There's our next storm system. This is going to move east and drive in some cooler air. It's going to help to push that front through as we get into tomorrow evening, and that brings about all of those changes. If you missed the pollen count earlier, Mountain Cedar did jump up some today. It's in the high category. 910 molds are low at 230. Your forecast 65 noontime, 71 by 2 o'clock, 73 by 4 p.m. I think we'll probably see sunny skies during the late afternoon. Southerly winds will be a bit breezy, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, some fog to start, then some warm temperatures, then a cold front. And Thursday, the numbers just tumble. We'll get some gusty winds with that, too. We'll time it out for you, let you know about some of that the potentially, uh, well, potential wintry precip. We're going to have the latest coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Quick look at Transguide right now. No problems at 35 and Splashtown. Cross your fingers, hope it stays that way. There's I-10 upper level merging together near the downtown area at Frio and I-10 at Woodlawn. And last year, the Texas legislature passed hundreds of new laws, everything from permitless carry to police worn body cameras. And today, six new laws will take effect in our state. RJ Marquez has break down a few of those new laws. Good morning, Steph, Mark. Um, a lot of people are already clicking on this story in KSAT.com, obviously trying to figure out how these new laws will affect their everyday lives. And remember, today's new laws are part of more than 600 new laws that the Texas legislature passed last year. So let's look into some of these new ones that go into effect today. So one of the new laws states that unattended dogs will no longer be allowed to be restrained with chains or heavy weights outdoors. It also prohibits an owner from leaving a dog without proper shelter or shade from the sun and not leaving drinking water. And if you get caught breaking one, this new law, you can be charged up to $500 and even possibly face a misdemeanor charge. Another new law that received a lot of attention last year was House Bill 25. So this new law requires that student athletes who complete who compete in interscholastic competition to play on sports teams that correspond with the sex listed on their birth certificates at or near the time that they were born. So this means that Texas transgender students athletes will not be able to play on kinder through 12th grade school sports teams that align with their gender identity. But there are some exceptions like allowing a girl to play in a sport that's not provided or the equivalent of a boy sport. So we've seen this a lot with uh, girls that are playing uh, football also for UIL or in public schools uh, that will continue to be the case but uh, this one getting a lot of attention guys and three new laws focused this morning on redrawing the Texas electoral maps to be used over the next decade that goes into the boundaries for the Texas House of Representatives districts and of course the Texas Senate so we have all this information guys on ksat.com a lot of different things to kind of dive into and definitely look at when it comes to how this will affect our time now moving forward so again 666 new laws passed last year and we're still seeing some take effect into this new year. We remember that number. Yes, yes. we do. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, we do. Thank you very much, Thanks, RJ. Guys. Right now, 940, about 55 degrees. And you're watching GMSA at 9. Another loss for the Spurs. RJ and David break down the latest episode of this misadventure of a season. So the Spurs can close the door on the Suns and fall at home to Phoenix. David and RJ are here to talk about another <laughs> loss for the Silver and Black. <laughs> Man, after that Cowboys, I was like, we at least we got the Spurs. Right? No. <laughs> for that day. Not the case. <laughs> yeah. You were relying on the Spurs to prop you, prop you back up after the Cowboys lost? For, yes. for three quarters they did. Three quarters <laughs> they hung in there. Look at David. He didn't even say a thing. Look, <laughs> those are called nonverbal gestures, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot, but I got nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you know, I was working. So I'm watching both games last night. I'm watching the football game, and it turns out to be kind of ugly. Oh, so I was like, you know what? I'm yeah. just going to continue to watch the Spurs. I was flipping back and forth. I was, I'm just going to mm -hmm. stick with the Spurs because the first quarter was really good. I'm like, yeah. man, that's one of the best first quarters yeah. I've seen in a while. Second mm -hmm. quarter, not bad. Man, that's one of the best second quarters I've seen in a while. Third quarter, <laughs> these guys are rolling. Got up 12. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody's playing. Yaka Pertles, your leading scorer, must be going right. Everything's working. <laughs> and they got to the fourth quarter, and uh, it's time to go to bed. Yeah, we had uh, we had some guys back here, of course, uh, pretty much back to full strength with the exception of Trey Jones. But uh, David, that fourth quarter, Spurs cool. were up by 12 in the third quarter, mm -hmm. end up losing by 14. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know if we want to do the quick mm -hmm. math there. That's about a 26 point uh, swing right there for the Spurs. And again, Phoenix is a good team. They obviously proved it. But uh, San Antonio, again, their inability to close out these games. They were, well, they are the best team in the West, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, looked like they could be the uh, team that goes to the NBA Finals from the West. 
But I, the Spurs is like, all of a sudden, they start turning the ball over yeah. in the fourth quarters. Like, mm-hmm. they didn't have very many turnovers through the three quarters and had, like, four in the fourth quarter, like, for the first, I don't know, seven, eight minutes. It's like, hello? <laughs> That ain't going to get you a win. I mean, and you're on your home court, and it's like everything's going for you, and then all of a sudden it just, like, it, it, it just ended. It's like, yeah. no, we've got a few more minutes to play. Mm. Can't stop now. Yeah, you mentioned Jakob Pertl, David. Uh, 23 points, 14 rebounds. DeJounte Murray had himself a, a nice game here and there. Derek White. So they, they had some guys step up. But, again, fourth quarter miscues, mistakes late in the game, and it's just uh, – I wish I could put headache, my huh? finger on it. I, I, but it's just like the same thing. They win one and lose three and win one and – Lose three. I mean, I. It's like, it, I. Do we come to the realization they're just not a very good team? Well, that that. Uh, mm. um, yeah. Especially wow. Do I say that? Did like I say that out loud? Just, uh, mm-hmm. like or was I thinking that out loud? Yeah. I mean, something. I don't know. It's well, just like they couldn't stop them. Especially if you can't put your finger on it. Mm. I think. I yeah. think that's kind of where you you sum things up. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the inconsistency. That has been a killer yeah. all season. And, again, I, I just can't get over the fact that they get these double-digit leads and they're literally yeah. gone within the span of a couple of minutes. I think I got up, went to go get a snack, and I came back, and the <laughs> game was, like, tied, and I couldn't even yeah. believe it. What they also get, couldn't stop Devin Booker. What was the snack? Uh, a little ice cream, yeah. Ice cream? Oh, <laughs> yes. cool. Okay. Well, so you got that going. You got ice cream in your freezer in the middle of winter? Yeah, I do. I love ice cream. Wow. Blue Bell. Okay. There we go. Sure. What kind was it? What flavor Chocolate, was it? David. What? Chocolate. Chocolate. All right, here we go. Chocolate. Those little cups, right. they're perfect. Hey, that might be more interesting than what was going on last night. Aww. It's, it, it's hard to pinpoint, but you look at a guy like DeJounte Murray. He has actually gotten a lot better through the season. So you got that going for you. Yeah. yeah. And then you – and but it's just, it's just hard to pinpoint exactly. I mean, they turn the ball over at inopportune times. They can't yeah. get the ball in bounds in opportun- in, at inopportune times. They, they don't shoot the ball very well as, as, as a collective team. They are not a very good shooting team. Right. And, and right. you know, I don't know that many rules about basketball, but I think the ball goes in the basket. <laughs> so so uh, you got to start – Get the ball in the back. Some yeah. good news. Uh, okay, Zach some. Collins. We got to see Zach yeah. Collins play first time in a while. So, Zach Collins, he's now with the Austin Spurs as he's been recovering from uh, a couple of foot surgeries that he's had. A broken yeah. foot last year kept him out. So, hopefully, we're going to get some help here on the front line. Because Jakob Pertl, I mean, uh, God bless this dude. He's <laughs> having to take on these big guys. All by himself. Game, all by, by himself. himself. Yeah. So, and did, uh, now, the Spurs may have some off-court announcement, right? Yes. They did have one, yeah. yeah. Just this morning they announced that they are getting a new managing partner, yeah. Joe Gebbia. I'm still trying to figure out how to pronounce the last name. Gebbia? Gebbia? It's, it's G-E-B-B-I-A. There we go, yeah. yeah. You might recognize He's like the, uh, the founder of Airbnb. Yeah, like that's the right. co-founder of that's Airbnb. Right. Yeah, Spurs just announced it this morning. So uh, he's going to be along with Michael Dell. We saw Michael Dell take over uh, a yeah. nice chunk of the Spurs uh, ownership got, group the, last year. So. And an investment group. Mm-hmm. So, so look at it like this. Here, here's the thing. So if it doesn't work out for you on the court, they got a computer company. <laughs> they got a place for you to stay. Uh-huh. And they got tractors for you to do some yard work. Uh, the whole t- so How about a, that? So if they want to get out of basketball, they have a diverse par- portfolio now? They definitely have a diverse portfolio. No, no, <laughs> they definitely no. do. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting for the All-Star break. Give these guys some rest. Yes. And then we'll see what happens after the All-Star break. They're still, what I think they're two and a half, three and a half out of the tenth spot yeah, now. Yeah. They're, they're, they're sliding. So I have a question. Are we only going to run sound bites with players on, on nights they win <laughs> from now on? Uh, well, you know what, Mark? Glad you asked. Let's go and hear from Kelvin <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> talk about this okay. loss. <laughs> they're in the championship last year. They're a very good team. Very solid. Um, you know, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot a couple of times. We had some bad turnovers, uh, some couple bad shots. But, you know, we were we were right there, you know. And, uh, I mean, hats off to them. They played a, they played a good game. And, you know, they played solid. And uh, we just got to be better. Mm. Well, like Keldon said, they were right there. I mean, come on now. They yeah. were taking on, the, again, the best yeah. team in the league right there. Should have put them away. That's what I miss about the old Spurs. The old Spurs up 10, 15. I think, oh, even, I think even Bill and Sean said it yesterday. When they were up, yeah. they would put them away. They would put they them would, away. This team does not have that. They would put right their uh, foot on, the, on their throat. Yeah. That would be the end of that. Yeah. Got- <laughs> <laughs> well, no all-star break yet, David. Not, Not yet. yet. We still got a few more games. We, I, I'll wait till Feb- I think the last one before the All-Star break is February 4th. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can pull out a couple of victories and take a break. Yeah. That'd yeah. be nice.
I know we need a break. This is wearing me out. <laughs> and I'm not even doing anything. i got to talk about and it. And you're not on the court, right? I'm not on the court. So. <laughs> Thanks, all right, guys. Do, Justin, we didn't take all your time, did we? No. No, no, you're good. Uh, you're good. <laughs> yeah, he's like, clear, that, clear we, that out for us. We owed him some time from yesterday, I think. <laughs> That's true. No, you're all right. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Yesterday was a rough day. So <laughs> yeah, all the way around. Yeah. Time on that. Uh, speaking of rough, pollen count. Mountain Cedar, a lot of people asking, when are we going to be done with this? Here we go. This is uh, the, the yellow bars represent the actual counts, the red line. That's kind of our average season. So this is when we would be peaking. Although we had that one day on uh, Saturday where it was very windy and we had a big count. But since then, it's fallen off. And it seems like we may be kind of winding down the season, I hope, as uh, we go forward here. But we'll keep you posted. We are going to get some gusty winds uh, coming up on Thursday. Hopefully, though, that comes with a little bit of precipitation, which would you know, keep maybe Mountain Cedar at bay. We'll let you know. Time lapse. Beautiful sunrise this morning. You see some of those clouds coming through. It looked like there was a little bit of rain falling out. Most of that evaporated before it reached the ground. But a few sprinkles reported around the area. 53 degrees at the airport. South southwesterly really winds at about 7. Dew point is at 46. That number is on the rise. Temperatures 57. Kenya Lake 58 in Comfort, 50 right now in Hondo, 55 in Divine, 55 in Catula, and closing in on 60 down there in Bevo. We mentioned those two points starting to jump up a little bit. Actually, a pretty big rise from yesterday. And with the numbers rising into tomorrow morning, I think we will get a little bit of fog to develop. So we could get those two points as high as the 50s by tomorrow morning, which would allow for some fog. But that cold front slides through Wednesday night, and that will take all that humidity away once again 73 degrees the high temperature today should be a gorgeous day with uh, sunny skies this afternoon those showers and some of that cloud cover quickly moving east now we can still pick up a few sprinkles there on the radar a little swirl in the atmosphere out west this moves east this is what helps to draw in that cold air to push that cold front through and here's how it looks on the future cast by tomorrow morning cold fronts moving into north texas then uh, by, say, 5 o'clock, it's on our doorstep. Probably starting to move through the hill country and then through the entire area by midnight. With the front, initially, I, I don't expect much rain, but it's behind it where we get a little bit of action, a little bit of energy coming in, and then we should start to get some light wintry precip across the hill country Thursday morning. I think most of this will be fairly light, uh, but we'll need to watch the bridges and overpasses, things like that very closely. Keep in mind, the day before, we're going to be up close to 80. So I don't anticipate major impacts here that moves south through the day. Even here in San Antonio, I think we could see a little bit of sleep, maybe some freezing rain mixed in, and that's probably going to be the main mode of precipitation there as this moves through uh, by Thursday evening. This is moving out and we're clearing out very quickly. What we're uh, what we're thinking is that we'll get 30s on Thursday, wind chills in the 20s, some wintry precip. That's a pretty good bet at this point. What's possible is maybe some of those bridges and overpasses get a little bit icy. Uh, we'll definitely keep you posted if that is uh, that is happening. Forecast, extended forecast, very cold on Thursday. We get some freezing temperatures Friday morning, Saturday morning, but it does warm up 50s and maybe a few more rain chances Sunday into Monday.